St. Baldrick's is an organization that gives out research grants and funds for people to help fight pediatric cancer. Thanks for doing this, buddy. No problem. From day one, I knew that I couldn't let leukemia define me. It's not about the things that tear us down, the things that tear us apart that define us. I want to use my fight to help others fight. Connor did this on his own. He asked me, Coach, will you let me talk to the team about it? Love you, man. Do it. I think as a team, we all came together, and it was a no-brainer for us to shave our head, to give back. My top expectation was that maybe like 30 people would do it. And before I know it, I have 60 plus names of people who are willing to cut off all their hair just to let a few little kids know, hey, you're not alone. You want to keep your facial hair? Yeah, yeah. I've never felt a lot on this since day one, and they're the reason. <laughs> Love you, kid. Look what you did. You did a heck of a job. You came together, didn't you? Yeah, it? you did good. We're going to be going back here about four or five times from 6 to 7 o'clock. Okay. So here's kind of what I got laid out. Well, some gopher football players may have to uh, adjust their helmets this week. They might not fit anymore. Yeah, it's because of a movement. It's called Gophers Clip Cancer. Stand by. Well, here we have it right now, Mike Rollis, who hasn't had your hair cut in four years. Yeah, it's, it's been a while, but I think it's time. He's been ugly for so long, it's about time it went. I mean, that hair's long. My hair is, it's, it's just hair. It's such a great cause. I'm doing it in honor of such a great guy. That is nasty. This is the Gophers Clip Cancer event. Joe? Yeah, and the only guy that hasn't gotten his hair cut yet is Connor Cosgrove, the guy who came up with this idea. So I think we ought to do the honors here, right down the middle. Huh? What do you guys think? Right down, right down the middle. There goes the I couldn't believe for him to do something like that because I knew how long it took him to get that hair back. If I can help even a few people the way that I've been helped, then I think it'll all be worth it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you did it. Did it. Love you too, babe. In 2008, I was diagnosed with non-alcoholic cirrhosis of the liver. I finally got to the point where the doctor told me, you're either going to have to have a liver transplant or you're going to die. Our community and family and friends raised over $100,000 for him to be put on a liver transplant list community just said, you know, we're not going to let you do this to one of ours. And they pulled together and made it happen for me. Brad had to get a liver transplant on August 13th this summer. It was during the time Anthony was going to be at football camp. And we were hesitant about asking him to come home because we did not want to ruin his chance of starting that linebacker. I said, listen, if this is going to any way affect your playing time. You stay where you're at. Iowa is very supportive about that. Iowa had him come home. He was able to spend Saturday night, Sunday, um, Monday with us at the hospital. That meant everything to me to have all my boys there for me when I went in for that. The night before, I went in for my surgery. I wrote a letter and I told Anthony how I felt about him and that his name was Anthony Hitchens, but you are an Anderson. And don't ever forget it. You go through life, but you never realize you know, how much people really mean to you. My dad always been in and out of my life growing up, and I just felt like Brad was always there. He calls me dad. He is my son. He might not biologically be my son, but he is my son. <laughs>